it's time for laughs with Mr. Thomas. Woohoo! Here we are with the final graph transformation. Lesson number seven, y equals f of kx. Just remember, there are six transformations that you need to be aware of in higher, and we're looking at them one at a time. This is now the final one. So y equals f of kx. Well, let's think back to previous years. Really what we're doing is we're putting a number in front of x. When have we done that in the past? Well, think back to graphing y equals sine x and y equals sine 2x. All we did was we put a number in front of x. How did that change the graph? Well, let's have a think. If you had y equals sine x, it looks something like that. It's going between 0 and 360. y equals sine 2x, though, how does that change the graph? James, what are you thinking? James, perfectly right, there are two of them. You now have two cycles of your sine graph. So rather than ending at 360, one cycle would end at 180. You could also say that the period has been halved. So rather than ending at 360, it's now ending at 180. Or, as I said, there are two cycles. Uh, between 0 and 360. Really what we've done though is we've taken the sine graph and we have compressed it in the uh, x-axis. So you can see the y equals sine 2x has been compressed horizontally. This was done by halving the x-coordinate of each point. So instead of this point here being up at 90 in the x-axis, it would only be at 45. Instead of this point being 180, we've halved it to be at 90. The 270 has been halved and 360 has been halved as well. We're halving the x coordinate when we put a 2 in front of the x. So, if you are given the graph of y equals f of x, you can graph y equals f of kx by either stretching or compressing the graph horizontally. To find the new x value, what you want to do is you want to always divide the x coordinate by this number, k. So if it was 2x, you would divide by 2. If it was 3x, you would divide by 3. If k is bigger than 1, then the graph is going to compress just the way we saw there when we had uh, sine 2x. We saw the graphs compressing. If, though, k is between 0 and 1, so if it's a number smaller than 1, the graph will stretch instead. So let's look at an, an example then. Here's the graph of y equals f of x. Stretch the graph of y equals f of 4x. So we've just got a random function. Here is f of x, and there are these four points. We want to sketch y equals f of 4x. So how do we do that? Well, because the number in front of x is a 4, because it's bigger than 1, we know the graph is going to compress. So all these points are going to move closer to the x-axis. And how do you find them? Well, you want to divide the x-coordinates by k. So we want to divide all the x-coordinates by 4. So negative 4 we divide by 4, 0 you divide by 4, 12 you divide by 4, and 28 you would divide by 4. If you do that, negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1, so that will be the point negative 1, 0. 0, 10 will remain as 0, 10, because if you divide 0 by 4, you still have 0. 12 divided by 4 will be 3, so that will be the point 3, 18. And 28, 11, well, if you divide by 4, you will have 7, 11. So your graph will look something like that. So it has a similar shape, but it has been compressed. And that will be your answer. Looking at them side by side, again, you can tell it's been compressed. So we've got the 4x, so it's looking something like that. Let's try a second example then. So example 2, here is the graph of y equals f of x. Stretch, stretch, sketch the graph of y equals f of one third x. So, to do this one then, again, you've got your points. We've got three points here, and we want to sketch that. So, with this one, because k is between 0 and 1, we know the graph is not going to compress. It's going to stretch this time. We have a third, so it will stretch. 
So to find the new x coordinates, we will divide the current x value, the current x coordinates, by one third. Quick recap, to divide by a fraction, we just want to flip it and times. So dividing by one third is the same as multiplying by three. So we've got these x values, we've got negative four, four and zero. If you multiply them then by three, well four times three, you would get 12. Negative four times three is negative four negative 12 and 0 times 4 will still be 0 so that point will remain just where it is. If you draw in your line then it will look something like that. That will be your graph of y equals f of 1 third x. So your x values are going to multiply by 3. That will be your new graph. If you look at them side by side you can see that f of 1 third x has been stretched in the y-axis. It's been stretched horizontally. Give these questions a shot, see how you get on, let me know if you need a hand. Good luck, enjoy!